knowledge. The light has come into the world. I got many of my brothers and sisters here tonight so that you might know this truth. I'm willing to reason with you so that you might know that you're as you're walking in sin and walking in darkness, but that you could be forgiven, that you could be washed by what Jesus has done on the cross, that you could be justified and sanctified, created in you. That's why we come out here, because we know, because of what Jesus has done to us, what he's done in our lives, that he could do it in your life. So my friends, I hope that you might humble yourself in the sight of God tonight, forsake, forsake your wicked lifestyle, forsake your sin and follow Jesus. You see, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but to have eternal life. You see, this life is found in Jesus alone. That's why Jesus came on the cross and know that he was tempted in every which way, just like we are, just like you are. He was tempted in every which way, but never gave to sin. Listen to what I just said. Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh and was tempted in every which way, but never gave to sin. The Bible says that Jesus overcame the world. He overcame the works of darkness, the, the ways of sin. He lived a holy, perfected life, and he learned the things through what he suffered. You see, Jesus overcame this world. And because of what Jesus has done on the cross, my friend, we can stand here and tell you because he has overcome, we can overcome. And if we can overcome, you can overcome. You can be set free from your sin, from your sexual immorality, and your perversion, your corn hub addiction, your OnlyFans.com addiction. My friend, let me tell you, you can be born again. No matter what's happened in your life, as we know more and more, we hear about it more and more, the amount of sexual immorality that's happening in the lives of people. The Bible says very clearly that you can't imagine or comprehend the things that God has for those that love him. There's a distinction. And the only way you can be part of that unconditional love is by turning to Jesus Christ, by following after his word. The Bible says that who the Son sets free is free indeed. And when you're free, you want to honor the words of Christ. Don't you see, you honor what you do here. You honor the alcohol. You honor the things. You're religious in your sinful practices. That's why you're a slave. Whatever you love the most, that's what you're a slave to. Whatever you love the most, that's what you're a slave to. Make that soak in. Whatever you love most, that's what you're a slave to. But know that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Are you hearing me? He was going to wipe you clean. Let me tell you, you're not so bad that you can't not be saved. You're not so bad in your sexual immorality, your perversion, your porn addiction, your porn hub addiction. You can be saved. You can be justified and sanctified. You can be made brand new. What's up, son? Save me. How you gonna save me? What? Say again? Save me. Save you. Yeah. Well, you need to believe on Jesus Christ. Believe on what he's done on the cross, his life, his death, his resurrection, his teaching. Jesus said that those that honor his word, those that love him, will honor, will honor his word. Jesus said, do you live by what he says? Yes, sir. Can yes, I, sir. Do you can sin? I, can I say something? No. You know why? Explain, explain why you don't sin. Tell me. Love. I don't watch you. I don't watch you. Okay, how, do you pray? Do you have a mother and father? Yes. Do you purposely want to sin against them? Hey, can you I, purposely want to curse at your mom? No, and, I, I don't do that. Don't right? Do that. Why not? That's hey, normal. Hey, can I say something? People hey. have potty mouths all day, right? But that's, why not? That's how family are raised. You choose who yeah, but why not? What motivates you to not talk bad to hey, your mom? Hey, I was raised that way. I'm yeah, grateful. but what's the real I'm word? Grateful. Yeah, they're, they're, we're getting closer. I'm grateful. But what's really? Do you love her? Of course. That's exactly. your answer. Exactly. Why do you not sin against your mom? You're because you're love you're motivates you to honor her. Okay. And so it is with Christ. That's why you're not understanding. But you do. You do practice in a way what you're not sure if it works. So I'm, I'm Christian, of course. Okay. But I question 
some Christians. Oh yeah, I agree. I question a lot because of Christians too. <laughs> people say they claim they preach the word, and uh -huh. sometimes they don't actually show, exhibit yeah. what they preach. They they they, so they, they read you, it but don't do it. Exactly. Yeah. So I want you to tell me why you preach, and what makes you suitable to preach the word. Suitable. Well, I mean. If it ain't because of Jesus, that's the only reason I'm able to do that. I know that he's washed me, he's made me brand new. The Bible says that we all must be born again, right? You've yeah. heard that term, right? And being born again means a changing of the mind and the heart. And when you have a true heart of repentance, I can't see if you're repentant. You can't tell if I'm truly repentant, but God can. And he says that in that moment that it causes you to be born again and he puts his spirit in you and he puts his words in you. And there's something, why? Because you're genuinely concerned about what you have done and also wanting to know Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says that Jesus, this is what Jesus said, eternal life is in knowing the Father and the Son. So it's not about a religion, right? Or tradition, okay. it's about a relationship. See, in so many ways, when you love somebody and you do it all the time because it's a natural thing. Whatever you love the most, that's what you're a slave to. Yeah. And because of that, that motivate me to live in right standing with God. And because of his spirit, that's why it says the grace of God is uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, that the grace of God has come instructing men and women everywhere to deny ungodliness and worldly love, to live sensibly, to think on the things above, to set our hope on the things above. In other words, Christ and he will set us free, my friend. And so that causes us to walk in right. Hold on one second, let me finish the thought. That caused me a why. You know, my wife's here, my friend. I honor her, I love her. Look at all these women out here, how they look, all right? And I, because of honor and love to her, I don't have to lust after other women because I love her. I'm more motivated by love than any kind of lust that's in me. And why is that possible? His spirit, reading his word. The Bible says that if you draw near to God, this is James chapter four. You draw near to God, he draws near to you. Why? Because you see your need for him and then he draws near to you and fills you where you're able to walk as an overcomer. Because Revelations, if you read your Bible before, you read Revelations chapter two, three, and it talks about those that overcome. So it's something that could happen now. Now think about it this way. You know, you've heard that there's gonna be a rapture eventually, right? One thing that needs to be ready is having a right mind and a right heart. If not, how could this new heavenly bodies that we're gonna get just like Jesus has, how can we get it if our minds are still perverted, walking in dark? Our minds are being prepared now and being perfected as we grow. Now I'm not saying someone comes new to Christ that automatically they're gonna start walking. They grow like anything else, so why, right? Why do you have to shame people? Like if the main message from God is love each other, mm -hmm. like understand each other, understand that, you know, life, you're gonna sin, like yeah. stuff happens, then why shame other people? It's not shaming other people, it's, it's no, other people. the Bible says that it's, those, hold on, those that God loves, he chastised and he disciplined. I have, I have seven kids, all right? And all of them had to be disciplined. They had to learn certain things because they just thought they could get away with whatever from little kids to God. And sometimes they learn, you have to talk to them. You have to say, son, you can't do that. And the same thing goes for anything. Uh, you go and you only grow. And as they grow from that, you know, because if you're gonna talk about God's love and why he sent his son, right? For God so loved the world, why do you love his world? So that whosoever believes in Christ would not perish. What's to perish? Sin them to perish in sin, but did right? Jesus not surround himself with sinners, he did. What did he, he do with those sinners? Sin. Hold on, Jesus set those sinners free. He did, but he didn't They didn't continue them. in sin. He didn't shame them. He My friend, them. He, he showed them the love. Matthew, Mark it. chapter three, he literally starts before he even had disciples. He tells people to repent for the kingdom of God is hand. And repenting means to turn away from the lifestyle you're living now, right? So he, and as a matter of fact, they accused Jesus, even though he was there, just like we're doing, that he was a friend of drunkards, tax collectors. Why? Because he was in places like this. He was around where prostitutes calling them to repent. It. Jesus said, I didn't come for the righteous, but those that are sick, those that are not well. In other words, slave to sin. Do you think you're going to reach so, these people by shaming I have, my friend. All but these people. Someone, most, I, 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 I'm, I'm giving you witnesses. I'm saying by shaming them? Shaming what? I think it should be more like, look, I understand, like, you're in the wrong, like, you're sinning. Understood. Uh huh. But why shame them? They shame what? Understand. Where are you getting that they're like being they're shamed? Making, that, that, like, to you, they're making mistakes. 
but you're saying shame, yeah. mistakes. Sin means to miss the mark. That Someone is to know and realize that to talk about God's love and talk why he brought his love and why he sent Jesus, the ultimate form of love, is to have to talk about why he did that to talk about sin. And to know that sin, Isaiah says, that sin separates you from the love of God. You, by sinning, separate you. Matter of fact, God likens those that sin against him as adultery. Now, I don't know if y'all have ever seen a relationship where a husband and wife and the husband messes around the wife of what it does in those relationships, right? So God likens that. He says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? And what makes you a friend of the world? By doing the things of the world. Okay. And that's what it is. Respect. Respect. I so just want to take a moment to give a big thank you to all you amazing people out there who have been supporting us in every way possible. Your, your support means everything to us. Your words, your prayers, and your generous giving not only lifts us up, but also fuels our passion to spread the incredible life-changing message of Jesus. And let me tell you, your involvement isn't just making a difference for us, it's shining a light of hope for everyone that's watching. Together, we can show the world what it truly means to be part of the Jesus community. Let's keep growing, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, and keep the fire burning strong.